Hi, and welcome to this OpenQ tutorial. Today I'm going to walk through submitting a render job to OpenQ and go over some of the functionality in the QGUI monitoring application. Here we are inside Maya, and we're all ready to kick off a render of our robot dance party scene. We've set up our Maya render settings. This render is going to use V-Ray. And now we'll jump over to our render cam just to make sure everything looks good. Once we're ready to submit the job, we can switch to the OpenQ shelf and click on the Submitter Shelf button. This will launch the OpenQ submission form as a Maya plugin. This UI can also be launched as a standalone application from the command line. The first thing that we're going to do is enter a job name, and then we'll give it a shot name, and then we'll enter a layer name, in this case lighting. Then we'll select our render cam. If we don't select one, it'll just use the camera from our render settings. And then we'll input the frame spec we want to render. So for more information about this frame spec syntax, we can hit the question mark icon. This will give some description and examples about the frame spec syntax. Next, we'll set up the job type. Job types define what parameters are exposed in the submission UI. We'll leave it set to Maya in this case. And then services. Services help us define default resource requirements and tags for this job. We'll submit this to the Maya service. And we'll leave the min core requirements set to zero. This allows Qbot to send the job to any size machine. And since this is just a single layer job, we'll leave the dependency set to none. But perhaps you wanted a more complex job. Uh, maybe you wanted to kick off a nuke render to be dependent on this. You could hit the plus button and configure a new nuke layer that would be dependent on our lighting layer. Um, for this demo though, we're just going to do this simple single layer Maya render. And at this point we can double check our parameters. And if everything looks good, we'll go ahead and click submit. And we'll get a little window pop-up that says the job's been submitted to OpenQ. And at this point, we can jump over to QGUI. So there you can see our robots job has popped up in the job view there. And this is QGUI, the main interface for monitoring the state of everything in OpenQ. It's a PySide 2 application that's built on multiple dockable widgets, allowing the user to be able to customize the interface to their liking. And at the top, we have the job view, and down below is the monitor host view. So we'll switch over to the job details view, and then we'll double click on our job, and this will show us the hierarchy of the job. Going from top to bottom, first we have a job. A job is a container for a single submission. Then we have a layer. You can think of a layer as a command with a frame range to run, and at the bottom is a frame. A frame is an individual instance of that command with a single frame or chunk to be executed by a host. So next we're going to walk through some of the other interfaces in QGUI. You can open up new panels through the Views plugin menu. We'll start with opening the Shows interface. This view will display a list of shows known by OpenQ and some high-level stats about that show, things like the total number of running frames and pending frames. From there, we'll open up the allocations view. Allocations are a grouping mechanism for hosts. Generally, an allocation is defined by the facility that the host lives in, in this case, local or cloud, and then there will also be a tag. These tags will be applied to any host in that allocation by default. You can see the number of cores in each allocation here. Next, we'll take a look at the subscriptions view. Subscriptions exist for a show, so we'll select the show that we're interested in, and it'll list the available allocations for that show. This then defines what hosts can run jobs for a given show. All of the allocations show the size, usage, and burst amount. You can edit these parameters by right-clicking on an allocation. You can also edit the show settings from this view by clicking on the Show Properties button where you can set the core requirements and do things like enabling or disabling booking. Okay, we'll go ahead and close the subscription view and we'll walk through the monitor host view next. We'll go ahead and turn on refresh with no filter to populate the full list of hosts. 
and this will tell us all sorts of information about the RQDE hosts active in OpenQ. We can open up the attributes view to explore this information a little closer. You can see things here like system stats and the allocations and tags for this host. Uh, in this case, Cloud General, and on this other host, Local Unassigned. If you notice, only one of these machines is running right now. That's because our dance party job was submitted to the local facility. So only the host with Local General allocation is eligible to run that job. The one with Cloud Unassigned cannot. If you need to do anything like modify the host, you can right click on the host and do things like change the allocation, add tags, delete the host, lock or unlock the host, and also uh, leave comments. That about covers the basics of the host monitor view, and next we'll look at some more of the job configuration views. We'll start off with the services view. Services are a way of classifying a job and defining some default requirements for that job. Here we have a list of services defined by different app applications, and you can see there are default system requirements and tags that get applied to jobs in that service. These parameters are defaults though, and they can be overridden at job submission time or once the job has hit the queue. So we'll, um, we'll jump back to the job details view uh, to take a look at how services are applied to a job. So we'll select our job and right click on the layer we're interested in. If we open up the properties dialog, we'll see something very similar to the services view. This information by default is all populated from the service that was selected at job submission time. Like I previously mentioned, that's just the default though, and it can be changed on a layer by layer basis if needed. So we'll go ahead and close that. And uh, it looks like our frames are starting to finish up. There's still a number of frames running, uh, but uh, these green ones are finished, so we'll take a look at the log view. Uh, if you select the log and open up the log view, you'll see the render log for that frame. In this case, it's a V-Ray log that includes all of the output from that render. There's a handy search feature down here that allows us to quickly search for specific text in the log. Uh, you can also open up uh, the log by double-clicking on the frame. In this case, it'll open in MacVim for me. Uh, you can edit this by specifying your editor in uh, an environment variable. Uh, that about covers the basics of the OpenQ GUI interface. Thanks for watching.